Hello, I'm Dr. Homer Ferguson, and I'm the organist choir master here at Emanuel Episcopal Church in Southern Pines, North Carolina. In our first installment, we gave a thorough look at the organ console of the C.B. Fisk Opus 145 pipe organ. Today, we are going to look at the mechanics that connect the console to the organ itself. So to do that, I want to start right here. This is a mechanical action pipe organ. That means that when I press a key, there is a direct linkage from the key into the organ, into the chest that pulls open a pallet and allows wind into the pipe, which makes it speak. So, I'm going to show you a really cool trick. This organ is a convertible. And let me show you how. Here, we have opened the top of the organ console so that we can see some of the mechanics of the instrument. Let me give you a closer look. With the lid open, we can now get an inside view of the action of the organ. You'll note here, these are the swell draw knobs, and you can see the back of the draw knob mechanisms. If I hit the combination buttons, you can see how they operate. But directly below those, you can see the full length of the keys of the organ. This is the part that we normally see, what we call the white and black keys. The white keys here are topped with cow bone and have some beautiful scribe marks in them and ornamental indentations. The black keys are topped with ebony and the entire length of the key is made out of sugar pine. At the back, you can see where the key is connected to the tracker. This is the very tip of the tracker here. These are carbon fiber trackers. And the tracker and the key are connected by hoist nuts. And if you're looking closely, you can see a little set screw that is in there. What you see here is the swell keyboard. If I push some keys here. You can see how the action or the movement that I make at the key is transferred to the back and lifts the tracker. Likewise, on the great division, there are keys that run underneath here. You can't see them, but they're running underneath in similar fashion. What is of significance to this particular organ and to Fisk organs in general is that the coupler action doesn't happen here at the key desk. Instead, it happens inside the organ in the coupler stack. So if I were to pull on the swell to great coupler, you don't see the swell keys move here. What does that mean? Well, that means that from this spot and into the organ, you don't have, you're not trying to manipulate two actions. So it's less work. It's just one set of trackers that's running underneath the floor when the organ is coupled until you get inside and it interacts with the coupler stack. We'll talk about that in more depth later. From here, you can see the pentagraph frame of aluminum. This pentagraph frame of aluminum encases the action of the organ. It's a construction technique that is used to, as much as possible, keep the action immune to reasonable climate change. It helps to keep the action rigid from the console to the base of the wind chest. Also, you can see 
part of the pedal action. These are the top three notes of the pedal board. This is top G, and this is F sharp, and this is F. The pedal action runs from the pedal keys upwards to this roller board. From the roller board, the movement of the pedals is transferred into the organ. This diagram will give us just a little more interesting information. Here you can see the swell keyboard. This is the great keyboard. The swell action is running downwards. Likewise, the great action is running downwards. And it meets at these squares. It runs from here underneath the floor into the organ at an angle. This here is the pedal board, and here is the action of the pedal board. It runs from the keys upwards to this roller board, and then that movement is transferred into the action which runs underneath the floor. So, let's have a look at where the action is running underneath the choir loft. Here you can see the console with its lid open, and now you get a sense of the case of the organ and its facade. If we move out of the church, we'll come through this doorway and into the hall, we're going to go underneath the choir loft so we can get a closer look at the action. And as we work our way, here we are. These are the trackers that come from the console down underneath the choir loft and they run on this aluminum frame. I'll get a better angle here. Here we go. Underneath all of the choir stalls and up into the organ itself. Right now, we're looking at the underside of the coupler stack. And you can see, again, this pentagraph aluminum framing. Taking a closer look at where the action turns underneath the console, we see the 61 trackers of the swell division right here. Here is this brass square and you can see how the movement is transferred. Underneath that we have the trackers for the great division that are running here. Also 61 notes. And below that we have the action of the pedal board. 32 notes which are running this way. From this view, we can see the trackers that extend below the console. They meet here at this brass square, and these trackers are connected via these hoist clips. The trackers that extend below from the console are cylindrical in shape. They are carbon fiber rods, if you will. The trackers that run underneath the choir loft are flatter in shape. They have a linguini kind of shape or perhaps a fettuccine. They're more rigid in their vertical dimension and they permit the run that extends from the console into the organ which is slightly more than 10 feet. Let me give you a sense of how the action moves in this spot from the console. From the underside, you can see the extent of the tracker run and the follow aluminum that keeps it rigid. The action meets here at the coupler stack and you can see the linguini carbon fiber trackers 
meet here at these brass squares. The tracker run goes vertical from here. We're on the underside of the coupler stack, so let's go have a look from above. Before we move into the organ case, let's have a look at this helpful diagram. In the bottom right hand corner, we see the organ console. Here's the pedal board, the great keyboard, the swell keyboard, the action running from the swell keyboard downwards and to this square which we just looked at underneath the organ. The great action does something similar and the pedal action of course meets at the roller board and comes down to this junction. These actions then travel underneath the choir loft at an angle which is quite unusual and meet here at the coupler stack. The pedal action is seen in blue meets at this square, moves vertically, another square takes the movement horizontally along the floor inside the organ case where it meets at this square and into the wind chest for the pedal division. The action for the great division is here in green and meets at this junction in the coupler stack and travels upwards into the great wind chest. The great division is in two sections. We have an unenclosed section and an enclosed section. The swell division of the organ has the longest tracker run of the three divisions of the organ. It extends, of course, from the upper keyboard downwards underneath the choir loft. It's seen here in purple. And then it runs vertically to the top of the organ case where it meets at a square and into the swell wind chest. Earlier we spoke about the coupling mechanics of this organ. The coupling of the organ divisions happens right here in the coupler stack. If I were to couple the swell to the great or the top keyboard to the lower keyboard, only the action for the great would be engaged and it's here in the coupler stack that the swell action would then be engaged so that coupling could occur and that both divisions would play at the same time. This coupling mechanism or system is a wonderful way of keeping the action at the keyboard light. To give us a sense of the journey, we are now looking at the coupler stack from inside the organ case. If you look at the bottom of your screen, you can see where the action, which runs underneath the choir loft floor, meets at the bottom of the coupler stack. At the coupler stack, we can then see that the great action transfers from there vertically to this roller board. This roller board then transfers the action into the wind chest. Let's have a closer look at that wind chest. This is a view inside the wind chest of the great division of the organ. Here is that roller board we were just speaking about and this is the pull down that operates the pallet which you can see right here. The pallet is connected by these little shepherd's crooks and if I pull the tracker you can see the pallet open and wind enters into the pipe through this pallet. Here I am inside the organ. 
To my right is that coupler stack. And these boards are just above the action for the pedal division. It runs underneath me to this roller board. I've removed the panel so you can see it. And from there, it goes to the two wind chests of the pedal division, which are located here at the lowest level of the organ case. I can operate one of the trackers from the coupler stack. Here's C-sharp. Here's C. The swell action runs from the coupler stack upwards in front of the unenclosed grate pipework where at the T it transfers horizontally and into the swell wind chest. Thank you for taking the time to learn about the action of the CB Fisk Opus 145 pipe organ here at Emanuel Episcopal Church in Southern Pines, North Carolina. As you can see, the mechanism is complex. Prior to the invention of the computer, the mechanical action pipe organ was one of humanity's most brilliant creations. I want to extend a special thanks to Rick Isaacs, who designed this exquisite action. I hope you will join us in our next installment. We will begin by looking at the three divisions of the organ, starting with the swell division first. We will journey to the top of the organ case and examine the pipework and learn all about the various sounds that live there. Thank you so much.